Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to give you a short overview of the newest version of Google Earth for your web browser. Now, this version replaces the previous version of Google Earth for your web browser. And the first couple of things you should know is that number one, the I'm feeling lucky button, which I loved and many other teachers loved, is gone. Number two, a lot of the pre-made tours that were in the web version of Google Earth, along with the games like Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, are also gone. But you can still find some of the pre-made tours available at google.com slash earth slash about slash gallery. That's linked up in the description down below. And you can still find some of those tours and click view in Earth to view them. Now, back here in the current version of Google Earth, let's take a look at where some of the features that you might want to use have gone. For example, the tools for measuring. Let's say I want to measure across Ontario. Well, I'm going to use my measure and distance area ruler right here, and I'm going to measure across. Now I have my measurement in meters. Let's change that up. And you can see here, I can change it to kilometers, or I could change it into feet, or I could change it into miles. I can even change it into smoots. If you're a geography person and you'll want to read a fun article, go look up some information about smoots. Let's put that back into kilometers. That makes the most sense for measuring the distance across that part of Ontario. Now, I should point out, you can also find that measuring tool by going to Tools and selecting Measurement. And while you're there, you can go into your settings and you can change your default for your measurements so that you can have a default of feet and miles instead of meters and kilometers if you so choose. And I'm going to go and save those settings and now Let's move on to another feature. In the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to find your Layers button. And your Layers is where you can turn on and off the various labels. For example, now I don't have any labels on my map. The default is Exploration. I can change it to Everything. And as I zoom in, I'm going to see more and more detail. And I can even choose a custom setting. Maybe I'm going to have the transit lines appear. I want to have rail stations and transit lines appear. And I don't want to have bus stops or airports. I want ferry terminals instead. And you can see there I have landmark options. I can turn on and off. Maybe I want to turn off the human structures and just have natural features appear in that particular view. You can always go back and swap it out at any time as well. Now let's zoom back out, see a bigger version of the map, and I'll point out that things like the peg person that you can use to get street view imagery, that's still in the same place it was in the past. Let's zoom in here on Boston. Let's zoom in even more. And zoom in some more. And there we are, Boston Common. And let's now grab the peg person. And we're going to drag that peg person onto the map. Let's turn them on. There's a the peg person. And let's go and zoom in on this area here. And see what we can see. And there it is. And now we can zoom and pan around and just like before, click on the arrows that you see on the screen to move along the map. And I can tilt and zoom like I'm doing right there. If I want to change that, 
or share that, I should say, hit the share link button in the upper right hand corner. You've got a link to share that exact view. You also have a QR code to share that exact view. I'm going to exit back out of that. And now we're back out at the rest of the world. Now I should point out that you have the option up here to add a path or a polygon. So maybe I want to add a little path around Boston here. And I'm going to go right back around here. And we'll see. There's my perimeter and my area of that. And of course, I can change it back out. Maybe I want to have it appear in nautical miles and square kilometers for my area. We can close that out and leave that as well. Now, the last thing I want to show you that's in a slightly different place than before is the option to add place marks. So let's say we want to add a place mark onto the map. Well, let's say I want to go to a place like Bow Island, Alberta. Well, I can now zoom. I'm going to add that to my map. You'll see I can click Save to Project, or I can alternatively add a place mark, put it there, and then create a Google Drive project. And I'm going to create this new project here and call it Interesting Places That I've Visited. I can write in my description if I like, but for now, I'm going to save it as is. And let's now change this place mark. Bow Island, where I visited Pinto McBean. And let's add in my description. This is the home of the world's largest pinto bean. And let's go in and say that we want to add some more information about that. Well, let's add some media. I have an image on my computer that I'm going to use in this place mark. There it is. I'm now going to upload it. There's Pinto McBean. And I'm happy with my place mark, except that I just have the default one right now. Let's change that out. Let's make it larger. And let's make it yellow. And the icon itself, well, let's go in and to more icons and take a look at the icon options there. There's my new icon that I have on my map. And since I'm doing this as a Google Drive project, it's automatically saved into my Google Drive. Now I can go back to my list. You can see there's other places in my Google Drive and I can create a new project at any time or I can go back to my other projects that I've made in the past and see where those places are. Aha, and there's another place that I have. Let's go back to my list. There's my current project. So that's a short overview of the new version of Google Earth for your web browser. In the next week or so, I'm going to create some more specific tutorials about the different features of the new version of Google Earth for your web browser. As always, for more things like this, including more Google Earth and Google Maps tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.